This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Hey everyone, I'm your host Danny, and I'm the first time reader going through this series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan, and he's guiding me on this journey. We'd like to thank and acknowledge our executive producers, Brandy Nern Kirkwood, Sean McGuire, Yanis, Lifelanded Fool, Green Man, Davis Ferreira, Margaret, Big C, Bennett Williamson, Hannah Green, Neralia, Jeff Searles, Eric Reed, Grayson Ishara, Ashley Bradley, Laura Lewis, and Helena Jacobson. And we want to welcome our newest executive producer level patron to our team. So Matthew Mendoza is going to be joining that long list of lovely people. Thank you so much for your generosity and your support. We really, truly appreciate it. In this episode, we're talking about chapter 21 of Towers of Midnight. Yeah, chapter 21 is an open gate. Yeah. We got three good perspectives to talk about here. You know, I don't mind reading one chapter when I get multiple views. Yeah. I think it's better that way. Yeah, and I think the best part is we are almost at the point when Perrin and the White Cloaks will do something, maybe. We're like, we're so close. And you know what I got in this chapter? A little bit. Of... A reveal I didn't <laughs> even know I needed. Morgays, right? It's the Morgays. Yeah. In my mind, like <laughs> everybody at this point knows it was Ravine. And I guess my brain just assumed at this point mm-hmm. Morgays also knew that. For sure. Or at least had heard rumors of that. Yeah. But yeah, no. I didn't even know. Hasn't had a that... lot of information in her captivity you know, for the last while. I didn't even know this was a reveal I was waiting for. It's pretty good. So it was exciting. It's not the reveal I wanted. Yeah. After all. But it's a but different it's, one and it's still good. It's a reveal. <laughs> yep. There you is. go. There yeah. you go. Okay. <laughs> Plus the Borderlander stuff. That's always great. I know you like that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And Iteralda. He's my favorite. And that's actually what the fun fact's about a little bit here. I really thought he was going to... I thought he was toast. Yeah, well, for sure. It was really looking like that for uh, yeah, a while. Yeah, I'm actually kind of mad he's not. That's rude. I know. Yeah. But now well, now we can continue with the Borderlanders and yeah. that. That's the good news. Yeah, there's too much sugar <laughs> on my Rice Krispies lately. There's like too much sugar in my <laughs> Wheel of yeah. Time book. I'm like, what's going on? People, People didn't surviving? Die. <laughs> it's crazy, <What>? right? <laughs> I mean, he's important, right? I, no, not really. He's a great captain. Sure. Oh, my goodness. So okay. was Pedro Nile. That guy needed to die. Well, yeah, but that's different. Okay, anyways, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Yes. Because the fun fact for today is all about it or all those battle tactics is it? with the really, really long spear. Oh. I'm sure you were paying attention the to what was happening. Yeah. Are you talking about pikes? Sort of. And I've actually... I, I thought I knew what a pike was. Well, you, yeah. It's it's a very it's a specific type. It's a stabby thing sticking out of the ground. Okay, right? what? Is... <laughs> no. <laughs> what am I thinking of? You know the thing you put up when there's zombies that are coming to attack? Like the shark pokey guys? Yeah. That, yeah, form like a wall? Yeah. Y- you're right, but that's not what that that's is. That's not pikes? No. And it's also not what they're doing in this scene. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> cool. Okay, we'll get I there. I paid way more attention to the <laughs> more game stuff. Okay, we'll talk about that when we get there. Okay. That's okay, though. So we get described that he's doing a very classic defensive position. So we've got three ranks of pikes, basically big long spears, right, and shields. But these spears are 14-foot pikes. They're really, really, really long spears because 14 feet. Yeah. Well, that's why I assumed it was, like, right? in imagine, the ground. Imagine three of you. That's one of the spears. Sort of. But, okay, go on. Basically that. That's what it is. <laughs> well, it's also roughly three of you. No way. That's way. What? <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. You know, that's part of my fun fact here. But okay. anyways, so he's got the three ranks of the pikes that are 14 feet long. And then when the first rank of the pikes hit the Krollock, they fall back and pull the weapons the free. The Trollocs. Not the Krollock? Not the Krollock. Well, the Krollocs and the Trollocs, there's all <laughs> different types here. And then they let the second rank step forward. Anyways, okay. So there is some real world inspiration. So are they all holding on to it? And it's like a jab jab yeah you don't really have to do much jabbing though it's already 14 feet and you're not really going to get a lot of extra distance but more than one person probably has to hold it no if it's 14 feet yeah that's part of the fun fact 
Oh. Listen and learn. Oh, my God. Okay. I'm so... Okay. <laughs> so you might recall I did a fun fact a long time ago in Path of Daggers on Philip II of Macedon. I remember that. All right. So that's Alexander the Great's dad. Mm-hmm. Okay. We know who Alexander the Great is. So his dad is the guy who introduced the use of the Sarissa, which is the really, really, really long spear. And then Alexander used it really effectively for his battles. Okay, so the Sarissa was a long spear, anywhere from like 16 to 23 feet in length. Whoa. Very long, although the length is contested, but we're going to get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> composed of... <laughs> composed of... No. Yes, I know. Someone's contesting length? Right. I so don't believe it. These really, really long spears <laughs> were composed of two to three main parts, the long wooden shaft, the metal tip and possibly a metal spear butt at the reverse end so you could plant it in the ground. Well, that's what I was thinking. Without damaging the shaft. Right. Oh. So you might okay. be thinking, wow, that's probably pretty heavy. That's a, probably a long shaft. But that's yeah. the thing. Uh-huh. Even though it's very long, not necessarily very heavy. Still heavy, don't get me wrong, but not as heavy as you might be thinking. So one person could hold it. So not too girthy. Not too girthy. Right? Good. So they're very thin. Phew. So there's two types of wood <laughs> that are likely candidates. One would be ash wood because it's got the length, flexibility, mm. and it's lightweight. And we know that kills fairies. Yes. Okay, good. Probably also kills Trollocs. Part of the quiz later. That's good. Yeah, okay. in a completely different series. Yes. Yeah. Also could be Cornell wood, which is in the dogwood family. It's shorter but stronger. And then apparently the spearheads are also contested on what they used in real life because some that they found were larger and heavier, some were smaller and diamond shaped. But apparently ancient writers said the Sarissa was capable of piercing shields and armor. So that suggests the smaller, more focused spearhead rather than the large big one. Ones. Sure. So that's what we're working with here because we got to penetrate through the Trolloc armor, you would have to assume. So everyone agrees that the Sarissa was very, very, very long. That's like its main feature. But exactly how long is tough to tell because <laughs> ancient units of measurement and people keeping track of those weren't always very consistent or precise. What? But the most trustworthy account we have is listed that they were 16 cubits for the original design reduced in practice in actually creating them to 14 cubits huh not a cubit now you might be now, wondering what a cubit is now correct me if i'm wrong sure. but it is completely atypical for any man to exaggerate the length of his shaft um or no i think that yeah, yeah you're probably it's right so we want to be accurate doesn't actually ever happen in yeah so we want to be accurate but here's the this issue day and age? this is the issue Got so it. when we say it's 14 cubits long what's a cubit a cubit is the ancient unit of length that measures the distance from the elbow to the tip of the middle finger now you might be thinking well whose arm is this yeah, based on uh-huh. And then that's the end of the fun fact, because I don't know. <laughs> and maybe that's why there's a lot of inconsistent reports on how long this stuff actually was. Is it because arm length also differs? <laughs> that's it. So it's tricky. It's really tricky. So no more follow-up questions, please, and thank yeah, you. Yeah, you know what? I'm done. It's a very long spear. Anyways, tactic-wise, we're pretty much bang on here for what Iterald is doing. Wow, I'm really going to need you to... Yeah. So you have the phalanx, which... So let me which... know when you... we get there. Yeah. When we get there. Not right now. I okay. don't need to hear about it right now. I'm giving... Okay, so... Five out of I five. read it twice, and I still don't even really know what was going on. Okay, Iteralda, five Big out of fight. five. Yeah. He has three waves, three like rows of spears, but with the Sarissa, you could actually use a full five rows of spears. Whoa. So basically you have five rows of guys with really, really long spears, so the tips of all five rows of spears poke out in front of the first row. Whoa. So if the bad guys get past the first row, there's still four more rows of spears they have to go through pretty good that's the benefit of having a very 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 long spear i get it man that's what's happening with with it or all then his army he's just doing it with three rows and two rows of archers okay and there you go so good job it all that besides all the stuff that goes terribly Ugh, wrong and good job to me for we'll listening get, to that we'll get, yeah i'm sure you took it all in mm -hmm. <laughs> okay shall we and only a few penis jokes only like a couple i really restrained myself and there was like too many <laughs> <laughs> coming at you from all sides oh my goodness right oh wait <laughs> no no okay you really filled in that uh first yeah. half of the show <laughs> it's good it's good okay okay so chapter 21 is called an open gate and the chapter symbol is the trolloc skull and in my brain the word gate is the same as gateways mm, okay. so i was really anticipating yeah 
some gateway situations yeah no here and that didn't happen no the gates for the next perspective yeah i I slightly remember you gibbering on about something about a gate and a city last time right when we got a map the map is very important so we'll get to that first though we're gonna talk about the thing i actually am interested in talking about okay and it's parent which is interesting that you said that right all right surprising now the power dynamics here are pretty funny I like this entire scene because we have the wise ones mm-hmm. hanging out in this, I guess, tent. Where are they? Sure. I always assume we're like in a tent or a palisade or we're some, in some sort kind of, of open th- air something. Gazebo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like we're in a field. Okay. So we're all together. We're having a meeting. We have wise ones who are keeping their mouth shut for the mm-hmm. moment. Yep. We have Aes Sedai. Right. And... The whole crew that came back from Kyrian. Yeah, because they sent off the little investigation crew. Including Balwer. Including him. And then now they're back to report the findings of said, I guess, investigation. Mission. Mission. Okay. Uh-huh. To find out stuff we already know about. Well, at least the wise ones for sure already know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Perrin is so relatable <laughs> in this moment. Oh, yeah. I bet you felt this. Yeah. In every single, any sort of class I've ever been in mm-hmm. as a student. And you're like, I know this is important, and I should pay attention. I sure wish I could I pay attention. And I absolutely cannot. I could <laughs> give a rat's <laughs> Yeah, he is having a tough time focusing. And he's like, oh, you're stupid. Yeah, he really Come berates on. himself. You're a bad leader for not, but he doesn't pay attention yeah. still. He's just still thinking he's about- like, oh, you idiot. Right? Yeah. He's thinking about that purple wall, the weird thing going uh, on in the wolf dream. That was a weird thing that happened. I think it's Violet, technically. Ooh. Was it trans- I always get these messed up. Translucent? Translucent. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Opaque, if you will. That doesn't help. That makes it worse. Oh, so are those it? the same word? Yeah. Do they mean the same thing? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What's the point? I don't know. Okay. Language, probably? <laughs> Maybe, okay. Sli- I bet they don't mean exactly the same thing. Okay. Slightly different. Probably slightly different. Okay. That's fine. Anyways, he's thinking about that shiny purple, maybe not shiny. Yeah, and we get a bit of like, oh, I've been training so much with the wolf dreams. It's all I really care about and want to do right now. Mm -hmm. Not listening to this boring news from Sayonid. Yeah. Okay. Do you want the boring news from Sayonid? Yeah. Do you have that? I do. Because the only news I have is that Elaine's queen now. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So the report basically consists of Kyrie is a mess because everybody knows that Rand wants Elaine to be on the Sun Throne. But nobody's there. No one's there. And she was having a tough time securing Andor, but now they know that she's queen. So that's good. And nobody knows about Rand's feelings on that matter, like if he's happy or not happy. And the wise ones aren't saying anything, but they probably know. They're sitting there with their mouth shut, like they already know all of this. They probably know exactly what's going on. And anyways... And then Sayonid thinks that Rand is an Ered Dolmen, so that's good for a time, I guess, indicator for where we are, because we're doing a little jump back. Okay. jump back and okay. where we are. Yeah, good to note. I did have that question, mm-hmm. because that means Tam hasn't visited Rand yet. Yes, and that okay. means that, yeah, Rand hasn't had his little epiphany moment, so we are still in bad Rand mentality mode. Right, and I guess that means Elaine just recently won her throne yeah okay yeah and rand from what they've heard rand wants peace with the shanshin so we know that that meeting is going to go badly Ooh. but that hasn't happened yet do we know the future we know the future a little bit yes oh yeah. that's fun okay and they know that tear is rallying I've troops. wanted to know the future a little bit yeah some people think that darlin is going to air doman for rand some people think it's for the last battle right and they're like ugh a king in tier, that's weird. Right, a little bit crazy. Yep. And then there is a little bit of an interesting sign conversation going on here because Anora, who's an Aes Sedai, is saying that it would be advantageous for the Shanshin to become like in an alliance with them, but the Aeol do not feel very good about that. Absolutely not. And how do you think any of the Aes Sedai feel about that? Also probably pretty bad. Well, yeah, and Anora, like, shut up. Yeah. You don't even know. Yeah, Stop talking no about idea. things you don't even know. But anyways, she's saying that, uh, you know, maybe kind of interesting. Adara, the wise one, is like, heck no. Like, if there is some sort of truce that Rand makes with the Shanshin, it's only going to last while Rand is in power for this whole last battle thing. Right. Because a lot of the I.O. are already talking about it being a blood feud with the Shanshin. Yep. Because they took prisoners. Uh-huh. And they are willing to give the prisoners that they take a year and a day. Yeah. Because And if shine. they don't return them after a year and a day. Then it's war. Then Boom. it's war. Yeah. We're going to go take them back. Exactly. And, uh. How do you feel about that? Worried. <laughs> okay. Okay. I feel worried. Yes. For the Aeol. 
Oh, for the Aiel, not for the Shanchen. No, I w- I'm worried for the Shanchen. I don't know. Who's worried for the Shanchen? I don't know. I don't think they're the good guys here. You could still be worried. Like, no. Oh, I'm so worried. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no, I don't want any fighting. <laughs> okay. Okay, so not worried. So, but you're worried about the Aya. Like, they're not going to be able to handle the yeah. Shanchen. Yes. I'm a little bit offended, but like, explain. Uh, Go on. Because they're Aiel. Come on. Like, they got to be. Yeah, but they don't fight channelers look what happened at dumai's wells did yeah, the aiel win dumai's wells well nope no not the shido but those are the shido dogs who and, don't know anything about honor or fighting and did anybody win at dumai's wells uh loose theron did yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would say ldd won. he mm-hmm. got to get, get free <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. for a little while yeah 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 the dark one the dark one won dumai's wells there you go mm-hmm. that's a Taim, whoever mm. that guy is, Metaphorical definitely thing. won Dumai's Wells. Totally. Not Demandred, but right. still a bad guy. Yeah. For sure. Totes. Okay. For sure. Okay. Okay. So I think we, uh, <laughs> we're caught Did up on the news here. Did you just confirm that for sure? What? Yeah. yeah I good. think so. Yeah, exactly. Great. That Taim is not Demandred. And a good bad guy. A bad guy. Is it? Is it still questionable whether or not Taim is not a good guy? It's not questionable. It's not. You're for sure yeah. <laughs> that he's a bad guy. Yeah. Okay. What was the biggest indicator? That he's a bad guy. The evil laughing. All of the bad <laughs> stuff he's done. <laughs> <laughs> it was the red and black uh it's the color decoration scheme. his interior <laughs> decorating this dude evil too Hate evil him. too evil <laughs> yeah. you ever walk into this like some people's house and you're like oh bad vibes that's For what's sure happening evil. Yeah. yeah yeah okay that's what happened yes actually okay. though that was like <laughs> okay oh, that guy <laughs> we actually do have more on this perspective oh, to talk about okay so next little piece of news here because seonid kind of wraps up but perrin says he wants to go to andor great to talk Good. to elaine excellent they, they they don't like that they don't like that idea. i don't care what they like because they're like hey what about that whole manetherin flag and everything that you're doing yeah because even fayil smells worried yeah right uh-huh and how does Elaine feel about Perrin? Bad. That's why he's got to go talk to her. Okay. So you're you're okay with that? Uh-huh. Okay. Especially if Matt's there. Okay. Yeah. yeah sure. Assuming he's there still when Perrin gets there. Okay. Like, let's, that's a big... Let's assume okay. for a moment Okay. Elaine is willing to be reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's okay. a good thing. Okay. Because we don't have FaceTime. Sure. Or status updates. Sure. Or an Instagram post to be like, hey, by the way, I hate this banner. You catch her on a really good day when her... Yeah, <laughs> we have to go there yeah. physically to talk to her and sort this thing out because she's pissed. Yeah. And she's working on misinformation. Oh, we just need like all in status updates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways. Okay, so you're 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 positive about that. I think it's great. Okay, but Perrin's also saying, "Hey, Alejandra, you're gonna go back to Johanna. Like, get the hell out of here." That's fine. No, she is an army. We have to collect everybody for the last battle. Oh, Not yeah. okay. Well, yeah. Come on. Mm-hmm. Got to get your head out of your butt. We got to collect everybody for the last battle. Okay, so then are they coming with us in the end? I don't remember what happens. Well, we're not really anywhere. Perrin says you're going to go back, but we're not. We have to deal with the white cloaks first because nothing is happening until that happens. Oh, that's true. They really want a battle. Yeah, they're refusing any parlay. So we have to write them a letter to say, okay, battles. Battle on. is on. Why don't you just go attack them? Pick the, well because he's doing the whole pick the spot thing. I think he should just go attack them. That's actually the next part here when they talk about the battle plan. Okay, is it just to go attack them? But, yeah, I mean, okay. It should okay. be. Catch them off guard at this point. You want a battle? Here you go. You don't even really have to catch them off guard. So Perrin basically says, okay, so the White Cloak strategy, they they basically line up and then they charge. Yeah. Like they don't have a lot of strategy uh-huh. because they don't, they don't have channels. I think that Galad is going to be a little better, though, okay. than typical White Cloaks. I'm just saying what he's saying. I know. Parent says, hey, if they're going to line up for us, then we're just going to use channelers. We're going to blow them all up. And our crew approves of that plan. Okay. So, I mean. Which is crazy. I feel like nobody <laughs> ever approves of that plan. That's the plan that everybody's like, maybe we should do that. And everyone's like, no, we can't do that. Yeah. In this case, uh, yeah, we can, do, we can do that. Yeah. It seems crazy, but like whatever at this point. Yeah. Okay. So, second part. The is chi- it going to be very dramatic? Well, I'm not going to... Or gonna, medium dramatic. Is it even ever going to happen? Is it even ever going to happen? When more right? gays yeah. somehow is on the front line... And says, that's my that's son. That's <laughs> My stepson. Well, she... Well, okay. What? Stepson. Okay, okay but... Isn't Galad her stepson? Yeah, well, Taryn Gale and then... Uh, what's her face? Yes. Tigraine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Stepson yeah, but... of her 
deceased ex-husband. Yeah, I mean, but deceased I don't... Deceased husband? I don't think they got I divorced. don't think she's going to say that oh. if she's standing on the front line being like, that's my stepson of my deceased ex-husband who I didn't really care for. <laughs> Doesn't really roll off the tongue. Mm. That's my son. See, see, see. That's what's better. Different? Yeah, yeah, that sounds okay. better. Okay. If anything, right. Glad will say that's, that's my more mom. Gaze. Oh, because <laughs> it's not. It's not his mom. <laughs> it's his stepmom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh man. Okay. Who knows? You know, the problem is there's too much speculation. There's too much time mm-hmm. for us to talk about what may or may not that's ever true. happen. Yeah. Because. Nothing's uh, ever are not gonna happen. Forward. Events <laughs> okay. are a thousand percent not moving forward. Okay. Side side note: the Kyrian crew who went to Kyrian to get information, they took got a little some information. They got, and then they took a little side trip to go to Andor. Cool. And then Perrin's all huffy because he's like, "That's not what you said you were gonna do." But and they're like, "Yeah." But anyways, you're right. <laughs> yeah. So that is what prompts the next part of this little segment because they're like hey we didn't want to just go off rumors of what's happening in andor especially when the forsaken are involved right and that's when we get the whole what do you mean the forsaken in andor and perrin super casually says it's like oh, yeah. yeah Rand says it was ravine he was impersonating some guy gabral or gabriel or something like that yeah you know he made the queen fall in love with him or something and then he just killed her yeah he's so eeyore yeah. <laughs> That's just what happened. That's just what happened. But crash. <gasps> oh my goodness. I didn't know what happened. Yeah. So well and Morgan then, is, is serving tea. Now I know. And then she I dropped know now. all the tea. I read stuff. it twice now. Yeah. Yeah. And then everyone's like, Whoa, what is that? But it's just Morgan's dropping the tea. Well, because at first I forgot Megden's <laughs> name was M- Megden is Megden now. Yeah. Not really Morgan's no. anymore. No, she's Morgan's. In the next perspective, it's Morgan's. Okay. Well So yeah. anyway, <laughs> it, I forgot. Morgaze's name is Magdin. Right. Okay. And so when Magdin <laughs> drops the tray, I'm like, who's this Aes Sedai? <laughs> like serving oh, tea God. for the wise ones or something. You know how yeah. like some of them were doing that? Yeah. And there are a million sure. Aes Sedai names that I've stopped keeping track of and have not kept in my mind. Yeah, but this is Magdin slash Morgaze. Yeah, really quickly it's revealed. Yeah. But this wasn't It's the... not a reveal. It's just what she's been calling herself. <laughs> that wasn't the... <laughs> That wasn't the shocking revealed part. Revealed to me. <laughs> Again. Revealed to me. It really quickly it was she, revealed to me in my brain. I'm pretty sure she may be egged in more than she's been Morgaze at this point. <laughs> like, well, I don't call her that. Okay, and well. And I didn't remember. Okay. But I was like, oh, right. Right, okay. But so it she, wasn't as like, oh, my. Yeah. And I was like, wait, who's that? What? Why does she care? Yeah. So the, the reaction is really funny, too, because I was like, oh, well, you know, She's from uh, Camelin, so she must just be really worried she's about... She's scared. Yeah. <laughs> she's so scared of the Forsaken. Yeah, just like this dainty tea-serving lady learns and that she... And then Perrin's yeah. like, how am I going to get more tea? You yeah. fool. How long have you gone in your life yeah, without you, you having haven't... anyone even serve you tea? But I feel personally attacked by this one, too, because... Well, he's like, you've lived most of your life without being able to order tea on command, and you won't die now that you don't get it with the wave of a hand. And I just think of all the things, just like... That even... rhymes. I like that. Oh, okay. Write that into a song. It's a song lyric, guys. What? <laughs> okay, go on. You've really got to focus here. Sorry. Okay. It's late. I'm tired. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a lot of things in life, just like ordering stuff online, too. It's just mm. I don't even know how to shop at the mall now. Like, I don't even want to go there. Oh. And then when stuff doesn't arrive the next day, I'm like, where is my thing? Like, where is it? Yeah. See, I still yeah. like shopping at the store because of the instant gratification. Mm. Like, I don't even have to wait till tomorrow. Right. I can just have it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Now. Yeah. Like, in the next 10 minutes, I can go there, get it, and come home, and then I have it. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I still am for in-person shopping. Okay. All right. Cool. Back to Megden. She's the important person. She is shocked, and she's going to leave. <laughs> Yeah, she takes off. She leaves. Yeah. yeah. And then that's when Perrin's like, well, I want more tea. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but back to it. Okay, but we have to talk about the White Cloaks more and again? Yeah, well, not necessarily just the White Cloaks because we're going to deal. So we're going to deal with the White Cloaks and then the Ashaman are well enough to start making gateways. Right. So Perrin is going to go back to his original plan of getting rid of people from his army. Oh, but nobody wants to leave. And he's so surprised. He's like, what do you mean no one wants to go? Yeah. So we're having that conversation again. Okay. Mm, and then Tam brings up the same points where it's like, hey, man, people don't really training. want to. 
the we've last been tar- battle's coming. Yeah, people might want people might want to go and then come back too, like check on family, then come back. Like that's a thing, but. For the most part, we're not going to... All just leave. Yeah. Yeah. So parents like, okay, well, the ones who want to leave, they can leave. And then that's kind of where we land. Okay. And then this is where we learn about the plan to just blast White Cloaks into oblivion. Yeah. Archers and Channelers, they're going to line up. It's going to be great. Okay. And great then Perrin plan. tells Balwer to write to the White Cloaks to tell them. Yes. And then this is when we get a really interesting conversation between Balwer and Perrin. Yes. And when I say really interesting... Medium interesting. It is medium interesting at best. Yeah. But I appreciate how straightforward Perrin is being with Balwer. Yeah, finally, yeah. right? And you know what's happening off to the side? No. Fael is listening. And Berylaine are listening. No, they're having a pleasant conversation. Ah, oh, they're I enacting. It. They're enacting their plan. Oh, no, yes. Yes. I love that covert mission. Okay, we're fr- we're friends. I love that. <laughs> okay. I miss that completely. Yeah, it's like a one sentence thing. That's my favorite thing in this and, whole chapter. Well, parents confused because he's like, they smell angry, but they sound pleasant. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I completely missed that. Yeah, okay. That's so, that, so that funny. Is, that is happening. Okay, Bauer stuff. Yeah. Let's get to it. So Bauer says, hey, I want to talk about the White Cloaks again. And parents like, no. She's like, fine. When I was in Kyrian visiting the scholars in the library, I found a bunch of really interesting pictures that were circulating in certain areas circles circles with people Mm -hmm. circling in circles Mm -hmm. okay it's pictures of (laughs) Perrin and matt Matt. yeah (laughs) it's the same ones yeah that Varen was passing out that's right dark friends dark friends it's because Varen was a dark friend Varen was a dark friend there you go exactly so this is what prompts Perrin to be like hey man you're telling me that you got these talking to librarians yeah (laughs) (laughs) no i don't believe you Bower's like, uh, I got special skills, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and I really like working for you. Yeah. Just just leave me alone and let me do my special skills for you. Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny because he's like, okay, like, tell me the truth. Like, you're not just a secretary, but you know what's interesting? He's like, you certainly know an awful lot about white cloaks. Secretary? Can't spell secretary without secret. Bet there's something there. Oh. Bower's a secretary. Secret airy. Secret airy. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm. Something there. Mm. Okay. Secretaries are full of secrets. Mm hmm. Right. I've always said that. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So Balwer doesn't like tell Perrin 100% what the truth is. No, but he's basically like, I'm good at finding information. Well, and he says, and my, past, my past yeah. employer, I respected him, and he was killed by the Children of the Light. He doesn't tell him that he was Pedro Nile. That's a nice to die lie. A little bit. Mm hmm. A so, little twisting of the truth. But yeah, so it's really nice because the, it kind of gives some mentality to why Balwer wants to work for Perrin hmm. when you could probably make the argument that his two employers, so Pedra Nile and Perrin, are like ethically and morally very different. Yes. But Balwer is very happy serving both of them, even though their like ethics are different. Yeah. Or like their mission, you know? Well, okay. So fundamentally, yeah. But I think on a really basic level, Mm -hmm. they're similar. I bet there are a lot of similarities too. But that's the thing is Balwer just wants like a strong person who's going to use. Now people are going to come for me saying Perrin and Pedra Nile are similar. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) I just mean in terms of like battle strategy and communication with Balwer and just like their view on things. Well, we don't even really know a heck of a lot about We don't know much about Pedra Nile. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, it is interesting because Balwer wants someone to use his golden nuggets of information to create, like to be a part of something bigger than just finding out the information i just really like baller's mentality towards working for somebody yeah and using my skills to, to advance, help someone to help you do whatever it is you're gonna do right and then parents like okay cool man double your salary he's like no no and he's like i actually don't really care big mistake about that huge huge mistake pay me in buttons <laughs> i love buttons <laughs> <laughs> well also yeah <laughs> okay Fifty percent of his salary. <laughs> just buttons. When he's like, "Hey, listen, if I'm just a secretary and somebody looks into my salary, exactly, that's I've, a very good point. I've busted people, and I was like, how about he just pays you, but then doesn't write it down? Yeah, it's well, it's like, like where the money. are we? We're in the old times. Yeah. <laughs> where, I what? just just don't write you that part into down. the database <laughs> yeah. of like the paper that says Ball were made eight thousand dollars. Yeah, like. What? <laughs> 
what are you talking about? You yeah, looked into their salary. System, yeah. yeah. How? Oh, how would like literally just like give him a box of money? Mm-hmm. No, a box you don't of have treasure. To, you just don't have to write it down. <laughs> No, 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 man. And never consider that as an option. Just don't write down uh, the, the treasure we give them. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, don't tell the accountant. Right. And it's fine. Yeah. It's not like there's the law or anything we have to actually yeah. care about. <laughs> it's like, and it's not even part of the law. It's, it's like, oh, he's money laundering. It's yeah. like, what? You, <laughs> That's a- you're an army in the middle of the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, anyway, so. So that part, like escapes me a little okay and it's like oh he's like oh i've looked into people's salaries and that's how i found out about them and their secret lives and i'm like where how yeah <laughs> ball work just like the the hacker well, it's man. like you know like nori who's like writing down <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly how much that. everybody makes exactly at every, and it's like how about yeah and like the fake we, ledgers remember when elaine was dealing with the fake ledger dude who was like faking the numbers but it's like that's because someone's reporting you should, to the queen he, he's probably, hiding it from the queen. It's like, but if the queen wants yeah. to hide it, it just like don't write it down, man. Yeah. There you go. You'd think that would be how it works, but you know, I'm not an accountant, so I don't really know. Oh, you're not? Not. Oh. Not in fact. In this book series. I am not I an accountant like in this book series. Either. An accountant, even if you were an accountant in this day and age, mm-hmm. it still doesn't transfer. Yeah. <laughs> to parent and ball work. Fifty percent of the population yeah. can't even read, man. Like <laughs> say who are you hiding this from yeah okay okay we have another perspective or count. To talk read about or that. count right <laughs> okay anyway is that the end of that perspective yeah that, that's, that's it that that's ends? it yeah because ball is going to keep doing what he's doing Perrin is good and we're good and more gays left and we'll come back to that later so okay sounds good well let's take a quick break before we jump into the next perspective okay okay so we're back mm-hmm and you've passed me a physical copy of the map of Maradon. Yes, that we already got back in chapter 18. Yeah, because you're like, do you want to see the map? And I was like, oh, there's another new map? And it's you're like, like no. no. <laughs> we have to go back to the Maradon I like, map. How did I miss that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, okay, I like a visual. Yeah. So while just, you're talking uh, right. and explaining to me what's happening in this perspective, yes. I will use this map. Yes. And I feel like last time you thought it was really handy. I do think it's handy. I forgot it existed. Okay. All right. So. I actually forgot about these little fishies. Yeah. Okay. Focus on the important parts, mm. not just like the decoration on the map. I like those. Okay. So, Iteralda, that's his perspective. Mm-hmm. And we're in the middle of this gigantic battle in Saldea still, and things are it's going- It's still happening. Yeah. And th- it's going very poorly. Okay. Bad, in fact. Horrible. Okay. So, referring to that map, remember, if you will- Well, and last time we were with them- they were like dropping Trollocs on the people. Yeah, bodies. Right? Yeah. Trolloc bodies. Yeah. And Drakkar and stuff. We're were swooping there. in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And there were a bunch of like siege weapons. Yeah. I did a whole fun fact on <sighs> Trebuchets. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Treb buckets. Treb buckets. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. So when we started, the army was in the upper camp along the fortifications. If you see the upper camp, I see it. They yeah. were defending against the Trollocs coming out of the pass and across the river. Right. And then the reserves were in the lower camp. Right. And now that I'm looking at this map, I'm remembering about how we should have closed off this passage. Exactly. With dynamite and with, stuff. With just the power, even. Exactly. Lots yeah. of options. Yeah. But we didn't do that, and we don't have any options right now, okay. because Meridon, the city, has kept the gates closed and said, go away, you're a bunch of invaders. Yeah. Okay. So Iteraldo's like, man, I got nowhere to retreat to. This is bad. So now the lower camp has been disbanded, and they are retreating back along the riverbank. And then the army that was in the upper camp has gone back down to the lower camp. So we're just basically, we're backing up. Backing we're backing up. up, backing up, backing up. But that's bad. It's not great. Yeah. But we don't have any options. But it means that the Trollocs are winning. It does mean that, yes. Yeah. So they're winning. So that's why we got the three lines of pikemen. We've got the double row of archers. We're doing like a slow retreat to try to kill Trollocs and not get killed. So giving our guys enough time to escape. And then we'll bring the Asha men in to hold off while everybody retreats fully. Right. So that's kind of like the entire, that's the game plan right now. Okay. And hopefully we can move back towards Meridon, but even though they won't be allowed in, hopefully if they get far enough back, the Trollocs will then go to siege Meridon, as is their intention. And then that'll give Iteralda and his people some time to, you know, get away to somewhere else. Right. And you know what? Hopefully Rand is true to his word 
Yeah. And will show up and help us. That is a little bit sad because it are all the things that a bunch of times this chapter. He's like, it's that's a dragon why reborn. I really thought that was going to happen. Yeah. He's like, he's going to keep his nice. word. But in the time frame of the mentality of Rand right now, it doesn't seem like he's in the good headspace right now. That's true. So that's not good. Well, I don't know. We're jumping all around all we over the place jumping, all the but, time. We are jumping, but Rand's not here, man. He's not here. No. He doesn't not. show up today. So. Spoiler. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> just for this chapter but, <laughs> to yeah. the end of the chapter Rand does not show Ugh, i okay. thought he would yeah but I, you're right i didn't recognize the timeline right right yeah so that's the battle plan that takes a couple because of pages because uh, now so. in Rand's timeline where we know him now in yeah. like his okay headspace mm-hmm. his plan is to go to air Doman. right but then I thought maybe he'd get there and be like oh right i should probably help. i should probably <laughs> help it Aralda. yeah I wonder if any reports are coming from the Borderlands because, man, they're being invaded right now by hundreds of thousands of Trollocs. Uh, sounds bad. Sounds like there's like a, some sort of battle that might be the last one coming up. Right. Or is, in fact, right now. Yeah. You know what I want to talk about? Trolloc nickety names. Nickety names. I love it. Okay, this is big. <laughs> this is big news. Okay, go. You go. You talk about the names. Okay. Trollocs have nicknames mm-hmm. so that we can yell when the different types of Trollocs are coming at us. Yeah, I, I figure in my mind it's like what you need to be uh, worried about, like what you got to look out for. I'm worried about the horns. Right, so that's like the goats. The goat ones. Yeah. I'm worried about the beaks. <laughs> got to look out for those beaks. They're really sharp, you know. On for the hawks. The hawk guys, yeah. I'm worried about the arms of the bears. Yeah. <laughs> I thought maybe like claws, you right? know? Yeah. With the claws, bear claws. Sure. Or teeth. Yeah. But yeah. no. Arms. Arms, okay. Okay. But then we have wolf heads. Right. And that one's not creative at all. That's just saying what it is. What? Wolf head. Uh, well, no, they're called mines. What do you oh. mean they're called wolf heads? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? I thought they were called wolf heads. No, mines, because mines. they're the intelligent ones. Because they're the smart ones. Oh, the I The smart that. ones. I miss that. Because some of people have even heard them talk. Yeah. Narg. Yeah. Was Narg a wolf head? Yes. <laughs> okay. He was. How about that? Yeah. I it's one of my favorite callbacks. Oh, okay. Yes. No, it's so great because it's like that's the whole thing. Well, is some there's... Saldeans have claimed to hear them speaking the human language. Right? To sometimes to bargain trick or, or bargain. Trick their opponents. Exactly. And those are the wolf head ones and they're smarter and mines. then they do that. Narg was a wolf head trollic right at the beginning. The mines part. It's so good. I thought it was just like, ah, the wolf heads. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what? I know. Okay. You really gotta character this whole like Narg being the wolf head smart one yeah i love that it's just such a good callback because it's one of those things where we never really hear about trollocs talking very much at all no, ever except, except for narg we knew that narg was indeed smart narg was smart but that's there's like a smart and we do know that there are smart trollocs and they can write and talk and all that so like yeah we do know that you but... know when we were talking about the pikes and stuff at the beginning i was feeling not smart right okay <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you would be, what are you, are you, are you a goat? Are you a hawk? Bear? <laughs> mm, I'd be a goat. Okay. Yeah. Out of all the Trolloc types. <laughs> really connect with a goat. It's like the smallest one. Yeah. Sure. I'm okay. definitely not a bear and I'm okay. scared of hawks. So. <laughs> there you go. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Okay. But anyways. Yeah. So things, things are going are bad. going bad. Yeah. And the fades aren't even really here yet, which is also bad. Because they are going to do even more damage yeah. once they do come in. And there's so many. There's and they don't so even many. like die once they're killed right it's away. It's not great. Yeah. It's all very bad. And then we get like this break because a messenger comes up with really bad news. Because Lieutenant Lidrin over there is making some sort. So they're supposed to be retreating. Yeah. And he is making a push He's into the charging. Truck. He's gone crazy. Well. He's gone crazy. Okay. He went. He went bonkers. And he's like, ha, 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 we're going to die here. Today's the day we die. I'm going to try and take one of them with me. Yeah. And then he immediately gets killed. But now now there's a gap in the defensive line. He's ruined the defensive line, which is bad. I don't blame him. Well, you should. I don't. The whole point of like a defensive line is to hold the line. If you don't have your mental health, you have nothing. Well, he has nothing. He's dead now, so. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i care more about lidrin than i do about like, anyone else i've met lately <laughs> poor guy not poor guy this yeah. is his own fault he should have stuck with his crew that was not his own fault that his brain went wonky <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad situation okay all right anyways now there's a defensive gap 
or a gap in the defensive line. That's this the medical is bad. term, by the way. Wonky. Wonky. Wonky yeah. brain. Yeah. Okay, so Iteralda gallops in with his guards to try to close the gap that's forming now. Yeah. And it's bad. Yeah. And then his guards are dying really fast, and the entire line's breaking apart, and things are even going worse. But don't worry, he has a plan for all of this stuff. So he's like, okay, if I can just. But then to make things even worse, then somebody, some idiot, blows one of the retreat trumpets to call for a full retreat, which is bad because you're not supposed to blow that retreat trumpet until you get a direct order from like Iteralda or one of the people saying retreat saying retreat so now some of the other retreat trumpets are starting to go off but some aren't because they're like there's no way this is right so now we've got half of the defensive line trying to retreat half trying to hold their position and the entire line is broken apart and now we're catastrophe catastrophe is it actually is it actually is because if it wasn't for the saving crew coming from the city, I wish they would that all be dead right now. Iteralda wouldn't keep relying on Rand so much. It's making me sad. Sure. It's making me not like Rand. Well, he's not very likable right yeah, now. Yeah, it makes me go, ugh, that guy. He's, yeah. Through not necessarily any fault of his own, he is abandoning a lot of people. I remember how I was like, ugh, it's sugar coated. Like, yeah. not really. <laughs> it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it would have just been like, oh, miracle if like Rand shows up with gateways and blasts everybody to hell. Like, <laughs> yeah. Mm. A little bit. Be like, ah, save save the day. Hooray. Yeah, that would have been like with like no warning, just that like that wouldn't boom. have been rice. That would have just been full Captain Crunch. That would right. have like full sugar. Cuts the roof of your mouth. But every you know, time. delicious. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So things are going very badly because if the next scene, if, if they're not getting saved, they're all being dead, dead. right now. Yeah. Okay. That's so, what I thought was going to happen. They're pretty close to it. Either that or Rand saves the day. Like, those were my only two options at this point. Mm-hmm. Like, a, I had uh, two yeah. very different ends of the spectrum and retreating back into this city that I forgot existed wasn't an option in my brain. Yeah. Yeah, so basically the way this scene kind of rolls out here, Iteralda's horse takes a javelin, so the horse is going down, Iteralda tries to like tuck and roll or whatever, but can't get out and breaks his leg. So now he's got a broken leg, but oh, then he's yeah, like... Oh yeah, he's like femur snap. Oh yeah, like it's... So he's basically determined he's going to die, but he's like, I'm not going to die on my back, so he grabs a pike and stabs one of the Trollocs, and then it falls down and he pushes it off of him, and then a fade sees him, and he's like, okay this is the fate that's going to kill me. And he tries to stand up, but he can't because he just wants to like die on his feet and all that. But then suddenly, oh. a dozen arrows slam into the face. I love it. Okay. Save the day. And then he can see that and the trolls... And then trucks... that's when he's thinking, the dragon reborn. Yeah. He came. He came like he promised, but it's like, oh. Nope. nope. These are the Saldan guys. And now he can see the open gate of Maradon. That's the chapter that's title. That's the chapter title. And you know what? I should have predicted this now that I'm thinking about this map sure that they gave us yep of this place Mm -hmm. we wouldn't have got a map of it if we were never going to enter this city not necessarily nah we wouldn't Ah. have got a we we wouldn't have got a map of this entire thing with like the whole palace labeled and everything if we weren't going to enter this city okay okay so i should have known you should have okay okay i see what you're saying yeah I'll know for next time there's a map I don't know that exists. But like, boom, something's going to happen uh, here. Very yes. important. Yeah. Next yeah. time I'm like, what's the point of this map? I'll be like, ah, future thinking. Maybe not this chapter, yeah. but like <laughs> I know. <laughs> three chapters from now. <laughs> Super important. Oh, man. Okay. I can't even think that far in the future at this point. That's fair. That's like three weeks, you know? At least. Jeez, okay. Yeah. Anyways, I really do like this scene because it all to get saved. It's nice. I like that he's not dead and he didn't die here. I know that you like that, yeah. It's very nice. But then this guy from the city, Yoli, 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 Yoli. I don't even know. I don't know either. And Y-O-E-L-I. I listened to the audio book twice. <laughs> Yoli. Okay, so Yoli. he's like. Yoli. 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 Okay, there we go. So yeah. he's the commander of this group of Saldan soldiers, these thousands who have ridden up to basically save Eteralda and his crew, whoever's left, because a lot of them died here. Yeah. But he says, hey, I hope you're worth it because my actions today are likely going to cost me my life. And then they ride off to the city. Yeah. So it's very important, though, because it seems like this guy went against direct orders and he was not supposed to leave the city to come save Iteralda because that was a whole thing. They're like, you're invaders. Mm. You are not allowed in the city. And it yeah. sounds like this guy disobeyed direct orders and came and saved Iteralda. So how do we feel about that and going into the city now, Maradon, which is about to be sieged by 
hundreds of thousands of Trollocs. Yeah, now's a good time for Rand to show up. Right. Oh, and as a side note, the Ashaman, they were able to destroy a bunch of those trebuchets, which is good. Cool. We got to see one of the Ashaman go off, and Idoralda knows that there's like a bunch of columns of smoke. So it seems like he was successful in like, I don't know, blowing up a couple of those guys. Okay. So that's good. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good for the Siege of Maradon. Maybe the Trollocs will go around Maradon and head to either Bandar Eben or Chachin. Why? Because those are the two that are listed on this map, but I'm trying to do future thinking. Okay, so Maradon is there. Bandar Eben is way... And Chachin's way over there. Yeah. Bandar Eben is way over there. They're going to head down the road. They're pro- Maybe after they destroy Maradon, but the whole point of the Trollocs are to destroy, destroy everybody. everybody. Yeah. But they have to cross a moat. Yeah. They won't want to do that. No. We- Stopped. <laughs> Did it, guys. <laughs> we built our moat. Uh, there's a moat. Yep. Okay, so... I'm sorry I didn't take that as seriously as I should have. No, that's okay. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. I'm the take it seriously kind of person. I know you are. Right. I'm the opposite of that. <laughs> and I, so I just, I feel bad. Yeah. I feel bad. Okay, I think I'm enthusiastic enough I for... I feel like there would have been a different tone... Yeah. ...if this ended in Iterolda dying. Yeah. It would be sad. We'd pour one it's out. It's less... I, I'm just trying to laugh instead of cry. Because this sure. is a bad situation for the whole world. Right. Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. I'm taking it seriously. I just usually deal with it like with jokes. Sure. Is that okay? That's okay. okay. I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, that's the end of Iteralda's perspective. Saved for now. Saved for now. Yep. And we're going to switch perspectives. But first, your fun fact went on too long and I wanted to talk to you about the dinner that I made tonight. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's do that now. Yeah. It was great. I was, I was going to ask you if you liked it because it was... A pasty. Yeah, pasty. That's right. Not meat, a pasty. Hot meat pie. Hot pies. meat pie. It was great. Yeah, no, it was Pan fantastic. Pie. Yeah, I would absolutely. The the juices dripping from your hand, right? Did that happen? I'm pretty sure. A little bit? A little bit. A little bit juicy. Well, little handmade good. crust? Yeah, it was fantastic. Good. Yeah, and I heard you did say that you have two more. You have enough dough for two more. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Which is important because tomorrow night we're doing our Halloween Q&A. Oh! Right? Should we have pasties at our Halloween Q&A? Well, I want to eat that before. I want to eat them again before. I'm not eating that on live on YouTube. <laughs> People probably want to... watch me eat a pasty? No. <laughs> People probably want to see that. You go, it's hot. <laughs> no. And don't you dare call it a pasty. Right. Oh, my the goodness. The internet will come for you. Right. Okay. 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 Now, we are going to move into Morgaze's perspective. Right. A.K.A. Megden, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Morgays, a.k.a. In Love with Talonvor. Right, okay. I love this. Finally, we're talking. I just, I love when we talk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, first we got to do like that. She's having a heck of a time. Oh, yeah, and she's having wander, a bad, wander bad Wander around time. evaluating, rethinking everything in your life that's happened. She's reevaluating ever. everything. Everything. From yeah. like the beginning days of Morgays as queen of Andor. She's like, uh, Taryn Gale <laughs> manipulated me. Tom manipulated me. Ravine, yeah. ma- I'm the worst. Yeah, uh, it's like, you know, okay, because let's not put words in her mouth that she doesn't mean. No, that's true. I she know. does talk about all the past people of her love life too. Yeah. Because Tom and then well, Bryn, she does think about those two oh, people. Oh, yeah. And then that made me think about Gareth Bryn now in love yeah. with Swan. I know. It's great. But the issues is that, yes, they probably did in fact love her, but not the way she wanted to be loved. Because Tom's uh, like the whole, you know, romancing and chasing. And then Bryn was like, ah, she's a queen to be loved and obeyed. Yeah. And that's not exactly what she's looking for. But nobody's really done what Talonvor Nothing has done like for her. like young Talonvor. Yeah, he's not that young. She keeps telling herself he's young because she's like, he's young, but he's not actually that young. Mm. And she's not that old. Mm. I still think you could play Talonvor. That's nice. Yeah. I could I could do Talonvor. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just like in a... In what? <laughs> in um, what context? In when I think about the characters in this book. <laughs> You're like, okay, tell it. Anyone that you could play in the show. <laughs> yeah. It would not villager number three. I yeah. can't do speaking lines though. No speaking lines. Oh, well then you can't be talented for it. I could like uh, look all dirty and grubby when he's like trying to, you know, rescue her and stuff. Yeah. I could do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, can you kiss eyelids? Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> What are my stage directions? I don't know. No, I don't know. Okay. Kiss her eyelids. Right. I'm also not a director, so. 
No, kiss him. <laughs> kiss her eyelids. Just do it. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, it's super weird and awkward. Do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Make everyone feel like, oh, this is weird. Okay. <laughs> That's the okay. direction. Back to it. She is evaluating her life, and she's like, oh, man, it took me 10 years to build up my alliances and then finally come into my own to be the actual queen. And then she swore she would never be manipulated again, and then she had to run into Valda and Gabriel and all that stuff, and it was really terrible, and everything has been really bad. And I feel like Morgay's, like, she has had the worst deal yeah. in probably in the books of, like, the highest high to the lowest low. She is. She was the queen of, like, debatably the most powerful nation in Randland. Like, Andor yeah. is probably the most powerful nation. And she fell all the way down to, like, captive. And it's terrible. Like, it's, yeah. she has a horrible, horrible story through no fault of her own. I know. Being compelled and everybody, by the Forsaken. Else, everybody else who has similar stories to her are main freaking characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Morgis has main character energy. In this like silly side plot, yeah. And I want to know more about it. I she's want like her a, to be a main character, like yeah. Because Egwene, super low, low, Damani, and now is the Emerald and Seat, right? Like huge, low to high, and she goes high to low, absolute yeah. low, and it's like yeah, she's just serving tea to Perrin, which is okay, but not when, compared to the Queen of Andor, the Queen of Andor. And I just think of like a comparable, secret. think of like Colavir. She wasn't as high as as Morgan's was as queen, but she, she was just going to be a farmer. The and she, idea she of was like, like living on a farm. Exactly. Yeah. She's like not happening. No. Yeah. And Morgay's turns it around and like comes out of it as like a whole person with a new purpose, even if it's not what sort she necessarily of. thought. I'm still like, confused about what her new purpose is, but she's getting there. She's finding it out. She's trying to figure I it out for that. herself. Yeah. I know. And you know what? Love. Love is the purpose at this Ugh. point. It doesn't have to be that much. Barf. Oh, come on. I thought you were all about young talent for. I am, but that shouldn't be the only thing. Like, there's so much that's interesting. She's going to make it back to uh, Elaine at some point. Uh, she better. Right? That's the plan, right? I sure freaking hope so. Hope, hope we're heading in that direction. Yeah. Let's get, that's where Perrin wants to go. I know. I wonder if that also freaked her out a little hearing maybe. that. <laughs> yeah, She's maybe. She's like, to Andor? To see Elaine? No, no. Uh, okay. Anyway. Talonvor is going to come up. He's like, hey, listen, lady, I'm leaving. Right. <laughs> so it turns out he wants to go to Tyr because he wants to go join the army there. Yeah. Darlin is creating an army. Rand was like, build an army. Get ready yeah. for the last battle. Why is that where Talonvor wants to go? Why doesn't he want to go to Andor and be part of that army? Probably because that's where he came from. He's probably got some bad feelings about Andor. I don't know. feels weird. Anyway, he's like, I don't know what to do. I'm going. I'm yes. going to go be part of it. Damn, then Morgan is like, don't. <laughs> don't well, okay. do it. Yeah, okay. So that this is their big heart to heart. And well, it's like a couple pages of the explanation that Morgays has now learned that it was Ravine, in fact, of Forsaken who compelled her right. to have the feelings. And that's why the feelings that she has and Talonvor knows she has towards Gabriel are not going away because it's magic and evil. Right. So there's a little bit of, you know, okay, this is where this is coming from, and we understand that now. And yeah. Morgay's asks him for some time so she can, like, come to terms with this, and he's don't like, okay, go. Yeah. And he's like, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, because he's like, I'm going to go. I know that you love people the way that I can never love you. Yeah. Whatever, whatever. You love people of big power and everything, and I'm just a lowly soldier. And right. even though I've loved you forever, we can't be together. Blah, blah, blah. Except so like, his heart's still here, so he's not really leaving her, but anyway. It's the whole thing. Yeah. And then she recognizes that he was almost as bad as Perrin searching for Fael. Right. Searching for her. Like, he wouldn't sleep. He wouldn't rest until they found her. And yeah. she's like, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, that's so nice. Yeah. And it's like, we really got to hand it to Talonvor because he legit brought the Shanshan to Perrin. Yeah. Like, he, he was the he was the thing. Catalyst, the yeah. The catalyst that made that happen, so good for him. Yeah. So then, I wasn't sure if she was going to tell all of this that she just learned. Right. Because a lot of our characters typically know something in their head, and then somebody else is like kind of being an ass and they're like, fine, be an ass. Yeah. You know, and it's like combative. Yeah. And defensive. So people are. Right. And it's kind of nice that she's like, no, wait, listen, I've just <laughs> found out this earth shattering, <laughs> life altering news. Yeah. Yeah. So just relax. Yeah. And then he's like, okay, cool. Cause I love you. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. It's very nice. Yeah. Okay. 
And we get a little bit of acknowledgement that Rand is the Dragon Reborn. It's really the last battle. Yeah. Like, it's go time, and we're going to be... All of it's good. Yeah, it's good. I like and it. And I like that nobody is forcing them to get married. Right, idiot parent. Yes. Ugh, terrible. Okay. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's it. That's all. That's the we, chapter. We did it. Cool. And stick it on with one chapter at a time because they are getting lengthy here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Now, this episode comes out tomorrow. Yes, which is the 29th. The 29th. Of and October 2024. And we are having our Q&A live on YouTube mm-hmm. tomorrow night. As is tradition for our Halloween October. Third annual. The spooktacular Q&A. Third or fourth annual. Something At like least that. third. Maybe fourth. We will see if there are costumes. And I don't know. I'm really not sure. Yeah. I know you're not because I plan everything. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. I'll decorate for Halloween okay, as that's, our background. That's okay. Yeah. So we'll okay. have a Q&A. If you can join us live, that would be super cool on our YouTube channel. And if this is the past for you, it will be up there for you to watch in the future. Mm-hmm. That's true. That is how the internet works. Yeah. In the future past. Back right. to the future. Right. Wait. <laughs> Don't know. Okay. Okay. So before you go ahead and casually drop a huge bomb about a forsaken compelling your servant's brain, I'm going to say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah, it's part of the pattern. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, edited and produced by Danny and Brett with... Passion Socks, Cody Feltz, Benjamin, Jamie Young, Megan, Jared Berg, Ricky Morissette, Lance Barden, Adam, Mozaim, Michelle Forbes, MKM, Antoine Benoit, Lawrence Bradley, Colby T, Gabby Young, Rycat, Zane Sayaka, Matrix, The Albatross, Bratimus Prime, and Matt Truss. With music by Audionautic. Be sure to check out our Patreon page if you are interested in supporting us and the podcast. We'd love to send you some Patreon exclusive merchandise as a thank you. Plus, you'll gain access to our episodes earlier than everyone else. And at the time of recording, we have over 40 bonus episodes for your listening pleasure. Find all that and more at patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast. For general information about our show and information like how to send us shot glasses, how to join our discord and how to get in touch with us, visit the wheel weaves podcast.com. And as always, please be sure to give us that five star review because it really does make a huge difference in helping people find us and tell a friend Riyadh because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks again for listening. This really is part of the pattern now. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, edited and produced by Danny and Brett with Passion Socks, Cody Feltz, Benjamin, Jamie Young, Megan, Jared Berg, Ricky Morissette, Lance Barden, Adam, Mozaim, Michelle Forbes, MKM, Antoine Benoit, Lawrence Bradley, Colby T, Gabby Young, Rycat, Zane Sayaka, Matrix, The Albatross, Bratimus Prime, and Matt Truss with music by Audionautic. Be sure to check out our Patreon page if you are interested in supporting us and the podcast. We'd love to send you some Patreon-exclusive merchandise as a thank you. Plus, you'll gain access to our episodes earlier than everyone else, and at the time of recording, we have over 40 bonus episodes for your listening pleasure. Find all that and more at patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast. For general information about our show and information like how to send us shot glasses, how to join our discord and how to get in touch with us, visit the wheel weaves podcast.com. And as always, please be sure to give us that five star review because it really does make a huge difference in helping people find us and tell a friend Riyadh because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks again for listening. This really is part of the pattern.